Okay, I'm going to get started on project three. So I double click the access file. Take a look at the inventory table. And also with the customer table. This customer table, first name, last name, and the address, date of birth. Here you can see the phone number. It's in an incorrect format. A fax machine is in a weird format also. Um, and we're going to uh, make some adjustments to the data uh, later on. So I'm going to close that down. And then we're going to import this uh, orders spreadsheet. I'm going to just double click it. And I'm going to just take a look at it. And we can see here we have the order number, uh, a date entered, customer ID, we have a product ID, whether or not it was shipped or not, and whether or not it was paid, and some comments. So I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, spreadsheet down. Don't save. And then I'm going to import that spreadsheet that we just opened up into Microsoft Access. So let's go to external data, go to Excel, and I'm going to go search for it where I saved it. Okay. Okay, first row contains the column headers. And here, this is the order number. And we want this to be the primary key. So I do not want this to be, um, well, it can either be indexed or not. But um, we probably don't want this to be um, uh, duplicated uh, yet. So I'm going to choose the choose my primary key, and so um, I'm going to say uh, the order number. Import to table. And I'm going to call it uh, table orders, and then I'm going to look at it. And that's the same information that we just looked at in this. Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to close that down. And now I'm going to right click on it, go to design view. And we want this not to be a double, but we want this to be an integer. Same thing with the customer ID and the date, or I'm sorry, with the customer ID and the product ID. Both these should be not a double, but an integer. And shipped. Has the product shipped or not? That's not going to be a double. That's going to instead be a, a yes or no. And same with paid. Has a customer paid? Yes or no. And then also the date um, date entered should be date time. And that should already be set, set as such. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Some data may be lost. Um, do you want to continue? Yes. Uh, nothing's going to get lost. Okay, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to make sure, okay, is this um, primary key? Yes, it's primary key. Uh, we should have set it as the primary key when we were importing the data. And just to make sure, it should have a little key We're going to right here next to it. And it does. Okay, now I'm going to go and um, look at part three. And part three requires you to do some, uh, do some steps. I'm going to skip that because you can do that on your own. Um, going to part four. And I'm not going to cover all the steps of part four, but I'm going to cover um, some of the main things. So table um, inventory does not have a primary key set. So we can just go over here and we can say primary key. Okay. And um, we also need to do the same thing for customer, uh, the customer table. And the customer ID should be the primary key. Okay, now I'm going to save it again. And I'm going to go back to the inventory. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me just close everything down. Sometimes it's easier that way. I'm going to go back and take a look at the inventory table. And we want to make sure that the primary key, which is the product ID, is set to an integer. Okay. We also want to do the same thing for this customer table. Make sure this is a integer. And really, what I'm doing here is I'm just going um, right down the steps. Okay, 
Now it says that under uh, table, uh, the table um, orders, we need to um, give a description of, of each one of the uh, fields. And we should do the same thing for actually each one of these tables, so all three of these tables. We need to give a description. So um, uh, date entered, for example. Um, you would write here, you would type in, this is the date that the information was entered, or this is the date that the order was entered into the system. And so that would be a, a, a good description. Okay, so now another thing is uh, if we go to the customer table, remember how I said the phone number was in kind of a, a weird looking format. We could go over here and we need to say uh, the phone number is in the regular looking format. So if we finish that, I'm going to save it. Just close all the tables down. I'm going to double click again on, on the customers table. And we can see now that the, the um, phone numbers are in just a normal looking format. Before it looked more like the fax machine, you know, where it was just a, a bunch of numbers. Um, so the same thing that, that we just did for the phone numbers using the mask, you need to do to um, the fax machine. And so I'm, I'm going to let you do that. And so, like I said before, I'm skipping some steps. Um, so now, this thing that we've just done right here is we're, we're looking at the um, relationships, the table relationships. I'm going to add each one of these tables. And make them a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing here. I can kind of move them around. First step it says customers to orders. Okay, customers to orders. One to many using customer ID. Okay, so let's move this over here. So customers, and we're going to drag and drop it right over here. Okay, so it says right here, this is a very common problem. The database engine could not unlock uh, table customers because it's already in use by another person or process. Okay, so if that happens, all you got to do is you got to make sure, oops, we got a table open. And so we cannot connect uh, tables uh, or relationships between the tables um, without having, you know, without making sure that every table is closed down. Okay, is anything else open? No. Now we can do this. So I'm, I'm, I'm customers ID to tables, um, table order I'm using the customer ID. Okay, what this means is uh, why I clicked all these, it says um, make sure that you're enforcing referential integrity. And um, if, if I were to make an adjustment to um, customer ID on one, it would update it to the table that it's getting connected to. Same with delete. If I were to delete the customer ID from one table, it would delete it um, on the table orders. So that's 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 what that means. Okay. So you should have a one to many, a one to infinity. That's the infinity sign here. And then inventory. It says we're going to have a using product ID. We're going to drag product ID from the inventory to this product ID here under table orders. Same thing, we're going to make sure we have referential integrity. And you should have the one to many here also. Something that's very important is you have to make sure that the types match. In other words, you should have a, if you have an integer, it needs to be an integer if you're connecting to an integer integer energy. You cannot have a integer to a double. So you have to you have to make sure um, that's often a, a problem with students is they um, they have something wrong. You know, every time I've seen a, a most most of the time there's a when there's a problem it's it's because you have a, the data types are not the same. Or like what just happened to us a second ago, there was a table open in the background. So that's a very common problem. But um, as I mentioned before, I skipped parts of, of three and also parts of four. You can go back uh, here 
and um, you, you need to do those. But um, so that's um, that's that's a good start to the project.